in this video what I want to show you is how you go about setting out the position of a house on your block of land. So here is my rough representation of a subdivision, cul-de-sac type. And there's a few different blocks of land around here. So your first challenge is to identify that you're on the correct block of land. And as silly as that may sound, sometimes in a subdivision it is very hard to identify what block is yours. Now the difference between this block and this block could be very small. So uh, it's advisable and in Australia it's law that you have to have a licensed land surveyor or registered surveyor um, identify the block and they should do what they call a boundary survey. So what they'll actually do is they'll go around, they'll do the block of land and they'll put survey pegs on the four corners and whatever major other points or changes of direction you might have on your site. So like that there's a survey peg generally about 75 mil by 75 mil now uh, three or four hundred mil long driven into the ground to pet the nail on top. Biggest problem with these survey pegs once the uh, surveyors put them in there's no guarantee that kids aren't going to come and kick them um, and move them so you, know, you need to make sure they're in the right spot. If you had an existing property, again, good chance these pegs have been moved or you know pulled out when they put the fences in and there's no guarantee that the fence is actually sitting on the correct boundary. So before you build on an existing block of land, always a good idea to get a boundary survey done by a surveyor and actually identify your block of land. And most councils in Australia will actually require that to happen. Now the other thing with identifying the block of land, um, there is a difference between the lot number, which is how real estate agents sell the block of land, and the actual street number. They will not always be the same number. So that can cause a lot of confusion as well. So you need to make sure you're on the right block of land and you need to make sure you know your boundaries. Don't assume um, that the fences are the boundaries and you know, needs to be done by a surveyor. Also remember that the front of your block of land is not necessarily the street. Council will have a um, what we call a median strip or a distance from the front of your block of land out to the street which is their land not yours. Usually it'd be, it's identified uh, just as a rough, rough guide. The water meter will just be on your land and it'll be out in the front corner of your block somewhere. So everything in front of the water meter is the councils. Councils also give us a couple of restrictions on our block of land. So if we just have a look at the uh, the actual block, the council will tell us how close we can build to the front of our block of land. And depending on the council area, it could be a couple of metres, it could be 10 metres. It really depends on the council, where your house is situated, heaps of different factors. So they'll, they'll stipulate that. That's called the building line. So we can't build any further forward than that line. The other thing they're going to tell us is the offset from the boundary. They'll stipulate that you can't build within a certain distance of your boundary line. So there'll generally be an offset there. So when we design our house, we need to make sure it fits into those areas. And so this is the shape of my proposed house. As you can see, it's right on that boundary line there and it doesn't come any further forward than the building line, so it's all going to comply. And realistically, with when we're setting out a house, it doesn't matter how complicated the house shape is or how complicated the block of land is, as a rule, one of these, one side of the house will generally be parallel to one side of the block. It just makes the um, configuration of the house and the yard a lot easier. So Generally, we, we don't have a problem where we've got to work out funny angles off the boundary. So on your site plan, the architect should be able to indicate a set out distance from the front of your block of land and an offset from the boundary. So this will give you a starting point. And what we do is we use pegs similar to the surveyor's pegs and we can put a peg in right on that mark. So the trick is measure out your distance, drive that peg in at a, as a rough 
uh, just in the general area. And then to, to indicate the exact measurement, we check measure again and we put a nail in. And that will be right on the measurement. So a meter off the boundary, whatever this distance is off the front, that nail will be right on it. So that represents the front outside corner of a house. Now when we take the dimensions off the plan, we're talking about the outside brickwork uh, or the outside cladding of the house. So that's the front corner there. So now we can parallel down our boundary. So we've got our offset there. We can measure in our meter here. Measure down the length of the house. 18 meters in this case. Again, drive in our peg. Redo the measurements and get that nail exactly on our dimensions. And then we can run a string line down the side of the uh, down the side of the house, and we have our line parallel to our boundary. So once we have a line parallel to our boundary, the next thing we need to do is establish a right angle to it, just so we get a good um, solid right angle, and then we can lay out the rest of the house. So two ways of doing the right angle. The first way is to use what they call the 3-4-5 triangle method or, or in this case we're um, actually um, re um, scaling that up so instead of using 3 I'm using 6 instead of using 4 I'm using 8 instead of using 5 I'm using 10 meters and the bigger you make this the more accurate your right angle will be so realistically you could go 9, you could go 12, and you could go 15. The bigger the right angle, or the bigger these dimensions, the more accurate your right angle is going to be. So what I've done, 6 meters down here, a peg and nail in there. I've then measured out here 8 meters, and at the same time measured out here 10 meters. So two tapes, and you'll need a couple of people to help you. And where they meet is where you put in your peg and your nail here. And then you'll be able to throw in a string line that runs through that nail. And that will be a perfect right angle for your block. That's one method, not my preferred method. That's one. My preferred method is we do everything full size. So we take this actual dimension here that we worked out we knew from our setting this line up. We get our dimension across here off the plan and using Pythagoras we work out what this dimension should be and we put in our peg. So tape measure from here across, tape measure from here across at the same time. A couple of people helping and you'll be able to put be able to put that peg in. And Put your string line across. So now we have perfect right angle on this corner. Once we've got that right angle established, then it's pretty simple. All we have to do is measure parallel off of these lines, and we can set up our what we call the building envelope. So the first thing we want to do is take the overall building size and get that worked out first. So we can then measure parallel, as I said, you end up with a peg up in the top corner there. And we can put our string lines up. So now I've marked out my overall building envelope. So the next trick then, or the next step, is to get some pegs and get some what we call ledges. So this can be 70 by 35 or 90 by 35. Generally it's um, off cuts that are left around from previous jobs. And we can start to set up profiles. So the problem we've got, if we leave these pegs in, then when we go to excavate, they're just going to get knocked out and we won't have any, any um, indication of where we should be. So we need to transfer these uh, the marks that we've got here off the actual line and away so they'll, they won't get knocked out. So depending on the method of excavation, um, we'll sort of dictate how far back you need to put these pegs. Generally, if you're going to excavate mechanically um, then you need them a couple of meters back if you're going to excavate um, by hand then they don't need to be so far back and these ones here they're going to be hard up against our fence anyway so we don't have much choice with those
So we take around, we go around the whole site, lay out our pairs of pegs, and we're going to make what we call um, profiles. So we stand those up, drive them into the ground so they're solid, and then we're going to need to put our profile top on, which is one of these, but they need to be in to a set height. Now, no block of land is ever level, uh, except this one here in SketchUp. So what we do is we have to find the highest corner of our block. And in this case, I've indicated it's this one here. And we drive in a peg that is going to represent either the top of our slab or the underside of our bearers, if we're doing bearers and joists, or underside of bearer, top of brickwork. So if we're going to go for a bearers and joists floor, this has to be a minimum of 400 millimeters um, so that the underside of our bearer is at least 400 mil off the ground so um, and if it's a um, slab on ground it doesn't have to be so high but this height here represents the height of whatever our floor system is going to be so it's driven into that height and then we have to level across use this as a reference and level across onto our pegs. So if you're close enough you could use a spirit level or uh, generally maybe a hydrostatic level or a water level but generally um, people will use what we call an automatic level or more commonly called a dumpy level. So I'm not going to draw a dumpy, I'm just going to throw that line in there to show that that's level and then we put in our profile top and that's in level, and that's put in with a spirit level, so that's perfectly level. Now this type of profile is called a hurdle profile. Okay, so that's a hurdle profile, and the profile top is on the side of the pegs, and it should be put on the side that is away from the house. So when I put a nail in this profile and pull a string line along it, I'm actually pulling the hurdle, sorry, the ledger, or the profile top onto the pegs. If I have this on the other side and I put a string line on it, I'll actually be pulling the um, the top off the leg, so it gets loose and gets um, doesn't. It's not as accurate. So I put the first one in, and then it's just a matter of going around, putting in our pegs, transferring our level from our height peg over onto one of these pegs, putting in our ledger nice and level all the way around another one down there whole way around so all of these ledges are perfectly level so it gives the bricklayer um, something to work off when he comes to lay his bricks so the next step then is you can take your uh, string lines off the little survey pegs that we had um, and the trouble we've got now is we, we know where our house is on these little survey pegs but these profiles don't have any marks on them so we have to transfer the marks we had here onto our profile so the best way to do that take a string line attach it to one of the survey pegs that we had pass it across the top of this survey peg and you can plumb a line up with a spirit level or you could use a plumb bob and plumb down and you extend the line through till it crosses the top of the profile and once you've got that extended and it meets that plumb line then you can put a nail in the top of your profile here we then go across to the opposite side and this time we're going to go from that nail we just put in and we're going to extend that through once again plumb up from the top of the the nail that's in the top of that peg and extend the string line through and put a nail in where that goes so we just repeat that process the whole way around so there we go we've got the building envelope marked out and now it's all up on our profiles so we can excavate and if these pegs get knocked out, then there won't be a problem. Good thing to do at this stage is to check 
your set out, make sure it's square, and you do that by measuring the diagonals. And if you find that they're out, you can adjust the string lines, get these diagonals the same, and then the building will be square. Now, as you saw before, the building is not a perfectly square building. It has got some cutouts in it. So the next thing to do is we go around and we put string lines up to represent these cutouts. And that's just a simple process of measuring off and putting in a profile and putting the string lines through. So we're just going to measure parallel off our existing string lines. So a couple there. So we just you know, measure a rough distance, set up a profile there, set up a profile there, then measure nail to nail, nail to nail, and run our lines. And the same that way. Now you'll notice I've still got this line to pick up and I've still got this line to pick up. What I've done, is because I paid a little bit of attention at the start, or when I started, is I've actually made this profile here a bit longer, this profile here a bit longer, and I've made them long enough that they'll pick up the string lines to indicate those areas as well. When you make them longer like that, they become what you call a continuous profile. All right, so this one here, remember we said it's called a hurdle. This is still a hurdle, but because it's longer, it's referred to as continuous. And if we had to, if it got too long and too unstable, we could put another peg in the middle of it just to stiffen it up a bit. So there's my block of land, um, my house all marked out. We can get rid of our pegs in the middle now, and we can look at excavation. Now there's two different methods that you may um, come up with, two different footing systems. You could have a strip footing, as I have here, or you could have a uh, bearers and joists situation. So depending on what your footing system is, sorry, not a bearers and joists situation, you could have a strip footing or you could have a slab on ground situation. So depending on which um, footing method you're going to have, you may have to change your set out slightly, and I'll show you why. With a say, um, strip footing, when you put your the wall wall and your engaged piers uh, on the footing, they are not going to sit right on the edge of the footing. Okay. Remember, I said the dimensions on your plan they indicate the outside of the brickwork, as you can see here. The actual footing is going to sit. Um, whatever the distance is, out from the brickwork. And it should be enough that this dwarf wall is actually centered, the dwarf wall and the engaged pier is centered onto the uh, the footing. So you're going to have to um, yeah, allow for that. So what we do on our profiles, here's the original nail that we took our first uh, set our building out from. That's represents our brick wall. You can see I've written that in there, indicated that there. Our footing is actually going to be, in this case it's 35mm, but it won't always be that. So whatever the distance ends up being, we then have to allow that distance there. Because when the concreter comes along, he can put a nail on that mark and he can run string lines out on that, on that mark and he'll know where his um, footing's going to go. Then when the bricklayer comes back, he can put string lines in on this mark, and he can lay his brickwork to that mark. And even to the point, if uh, necessary, when the carpenter comes back, he can put his string lines on for his um, timber frame, and he can mark out where his timber frame is going to go. So you need to go around and do that to the top of every profile. And depending on um, yeah, how you want to do it, you could put nails in there, or we could just leave it so you only put nails in um, on the ones that you're using. Some people, what they do is they put a very shallow saw cut across instead of a, a pencil mark. So you just cut a little, uh, you know, five mil deep um, cut with a hand saw, and they actually put the nails on this side. So the string line passes through the saw cut and it gets attached to the back of the profile. All right, so that's for a strip floor, strip footing.
and as I said you have to do that to all of these making sure obviously that you go out so on this one your footing mark would be on this side on this one footing mark would be on this side and here your footing mark would be on the outside okay so you have to make sure that they're the right way around if we had a slab on ground the brickwork will actually sit flush with the outside of the slab on ground so when we come to our profile our mark or our nail that we've got already will be in the correct spot um, but still a good idea to go around oops sorry still a good idea to go around and mark where the brick wall is going to be and then also mark exactly where the timber wall is going to go so again when the um, carpenter comes back he's got somewhere to, to flick his uh, lines out for his for his wall and again you have to go around and do that to the top of every profile making sure that you go the right the right way to the outside of the building so there you go that's the process of setting out a, uh, a building on a block of land now we're ready to start excavation or forming up to our concrete slab which will be uh, the next video that I do